Okay, so one of the reasons I wanted the centre stand dolly that I made was for occasions like this. I need to work on the left hand side of the bike. So I need to move the bike across to the other side of the shed. And it should make it a very easy process. Sometimes in practice is different to the theory. Let's find out. And there you go, as easy as that. Just pushed from one side to the other. I'm glad I made it. So yes, that's the bike in position. The idea today is to take the side casing off because the gasket is leaking and it's mainly under pressure. There is a bit of weep in there, but I think that's um, from when it was last ridden. I think mainly under pressure, it's, it's pushing it out and you can tell because your boot gets a, a bit of a bit of a covering well a load of droplets so that wants sorting before it gets worse so as i say i'm going to take that casing off and replace the gasket be interesting to see what's behind it won't it Ooh. first step i'm going to take to replace the alternator gasket alternator stator cover gasket is obviously is it obvious obviously to drain the oil out so 90 mil socket now because it's on my center stand dolly i've had to lift up the oil pan so it's level and um, it's not giving me a lot of room so this might turn out to be a right mess I know what I should do undo the centre plug and the air breather on the oil catchment tray or else the oil's just going to puddle on top and be, that would be hilarious hilarious right now can I get my hand in that not very well A bit of a blob full all over my hand, which I wasn't ready for. Always ill prepared. Nothing of any serious value on the sump plug. That's the oil drained successfully, hopefully. <laughs> you never know. Um, I've put the sump plug back in. I've changed the washer on the sump plug as well. It's a bit disheartening because the bike hasn't done very many miles at all. Probably four to five hundred miles since its last service. I know the book says every fifteen hundred miles, but we're going back a lot of years when oil wasn't as good as it is today. Um, so it's a bit disappointing that it's only five hundred miles, and I'm wasting about three and a half to four liters of oil there. But I need to fix the leak so let's undo this cover mm. that bottom one was very loose that certainly wouldn't have helped and Look at that. It's like it's like you're viewing it. Which one's which? Which one? Which one? This is the drawing. This isn't the real engine. 
<laughs> fooled you there. Oh, my artwork. Um, mainly because I don't know whether all these bolts are the same length or not, so they're all getting stuck through there like that. So I know where they go back. It just make when you've got that little bit of movement, I've got a little bit of crack up here. <laughs> it just makes you want to stick a screwdriver in it, but I don't want to. I don't want to break my casings. It's broken the steel all the way round. I've got a crack right the way around. I think what's doing it is the magnetic attraction on the windings. How does that sound? Sounds feasible, doesn't it? So I'm going to get a screwdriver. I'm going to put a bit of rag around it. Let's see if that. will assist. Either that or there's going to be a dowel somewhere that just doesn't want to let go. gears that want to come out with it and I think there's a, an electrical cable which has got to go to the the alternator itself which comes through here so that's where I'm at Start motor runs there, spare cable there, don't know why. It's nothing to do with the oil pressure switch the other side. Um, I don't know. Oh, the alternator wires go out this way. So that's them there. So perhaps it's the sprocket cover case I need to take off to give me some room. It's got a bolt missing as well. Two bolts missing. Three bolts missing. It's easy to take off. Um, yeah, so I think I've got to take that off. Sprocket cover off. As I say, the alternator wire goes down there and goes across the back here as does the feed from the battery. So, I'll take that off, I suppose. We'll have a look beyond there. It's all very exciting. Ooh, that was nice and loose. Oh, hang on, we've got to take the gear lever off. <laughs> it's all getting <laughs> very involved. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. What do we reckon that is? 12? Let's try 12. No, it looks too small. That's too small. So we go 13. That's the kitty. It's 
Oh, that one's pretty much falling out anyway. Jesus, that's a big one. I'm looking at these bottom holes here, didn't even think they're looking that one. There's a bloody screw in there, isn't there? Oh dear. I'll tell you what, I really shouldn't. <laughs> I really shouldn't. Oh well, let's take that screw out and see if it falls off nicely then. Oh, look at that. That was a bit easier, wasn't it? You see, now the foot peg's in the way. Hey, who said they knew how to build them in the old days? <laughs> there we go. All loose and everything, apart from <laughs> the foot pegs in the way. Oh dear. It's too much fun. I'm glad it's peeing hard outside because this is really giving me something to do. Right, I'll undo the foot peg. <laughs> Okay, well this bottom bolt down here is definitely snapped off inside, this one looked as though it was missing, uh, I had the rest in there, it was just the two, because I missed one, like an asshole, so now if I can get a bit of free play on the alternator wires, which is looking like I'm going to have to take the cable off the starter motor. I'll tell you what, for a quick gasket change, this is, uh, this is truly going places. That's definitely the wrong size, one about a 10. And I presume that is... Possibly live cable as well. Would it come direct from the battery or would it go through the start of relay and fuse first? I'll tell you what, let's get some, let's get a bit of testing equipment out and stick that on it. No, that's dead. That's dead. So we must need the ignition on to activate that. Watch the sparking. Right, let's pull that out of the way, put the nut back on. Like that. And then this is the cable we want a bit more play on will it will it play well it's given us it bring around this side with a bit of enlightenment right so first impressions what you might not have noticed is there's no blackness and for what I've learnt when I've had I've seen stators go bad you'll get a black one where it's not working properly and it burns it burns the oil on it and these all look a uniform color so hopefully it's a good one looks quite tidy in there Oh, I don't want washers falling off. So this is the the cog setup. So yeah, that comes out of there. And we'll 
re-establish in there. See now, I don't know where the washers were. So that just locates. <laughs> that just locates in there. Obviously, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Being that those two cogs are together, could have been one fell out from behind. <laughs> two washers at the front. What will that do? If they're in the wrong place, it'll push the casing out and not allow it to seal properly. With regard the cable to get the new gasket on would ultimately mean disconnecting it somewhere because it needs to go through there and then through there so it has to pass through this hole on the gasket and it's not like we can cut that because it needs to seal it by the looks of it so we need to trace this wire back <laughs> and unplug that Woohoo! i'll have to double check on these washers as well in case one was meant to go behind the gears are a flush face there they obviously turn freely it doesn't feel as though that's binding up on casing behind or anything so hopefully that's okay this is your starter motor by the way hello starter motor goes onto this gear cog in here um, so then drives this gear here which obviously spins it all which then spins this big ring so you can see it this big ring here which is then connected to the starter clutch which i believe centrifugally once this spins it sends out pistons or caps spring loaded they go out it bites on this which obviously spins the engine. Something like that, I don't really know. What I do know is I've really got to trace these wires back and disconnect them from somewhere up there. They should lead back to the regulator or rect rect rectum fire, which sorts out your ass. <laughs> so, let's get this off. Yay! That's it, pay attention, watch what I'm doing. <laughs> right, side cover off. So, wires go from... No, that's the battery, that's going to the starter solenoid. That's me leaning on something that I shouldn't lean on because it hurts my knees. Okay, so we're tracing this wire here, which goes, it'll be behind, it'll be behind something that I can't see and I'll have to take all the battery and everything out. Or do we take this off? Would that be easiest? What's, I can't tell what's a mounting bolt and what's not looks like those two right okay right now what do we want this one going right take the airbox off Right, so seats up. Now let's take the airbox off.
Right, so this is the cable I want, which is leading back in amongst this bunch of dodgy looking wires. So I'm gonna find out where that goes and then I'll get back to you because as I say, I've got nowhere to stand you and I wanna get on. Yay, success. Alternator slash stator cover is off. Wires are out. Somewhere down here in this length here, the wires that come out of the stator, um, which you have three of, split and become five at the top. Um, the yellow and the white and blue cable split into two. Um, I don't know why. Must have two different circuits that require two different <laughs> charges. I've got no idea, um, but they do. So that's why this one has got earth tape on it. Very Michael Jackson. Um, so I know where it plugs back in at the top end. Does look a bit charred there. <laughs> anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's just get on and do this. If you're considering doing, or if you've got a leaky stator cover gasket, bear in mind, it's not a five minute job. But having looked, that's the way it goes on, having looked down this bottom portion, you can quite clearly see where the oil has passed across the gasket. This is where it opened, all this wet stuff here. But it is leaked. It has leaked. Um, so it definitely needed replacing. Hopefully that is the only problem. Um, so now I've got to clean up. Well, make sure this face is clean. Obviously, obviously, take this gasket off of here and make sure this face is clean and then get the new gasket in place and try and put it all back together. Yeah. It should be all right, shouldn't it? Oh, and don't forget to put the oil back in. That might be important. But yes, progress. And as I say, don't ever think it's a five minute job. Okay, so the washers, one of which fell off, do actually go one either side of the, I think they call this the intermediate gear. So one either side of the spindle shaft. So I've put that on there properly now. I just need to get it on here without dropping the washer again. Bit annoying, I can't see the washer. <laughs> you just <laughs> you just want that reassurance that it's in there. Oh, I don't like it. Yes, it is on there. <laughs> Oh, it's rude. Right, that's on there. And, ah, oh, there you go. The gears were definitely flush before, and now this one is slightly proud. Which tells me the washer's on the other side. I don't care what it tells you. Right, leave it alone. Leave it. Leave it. So next step, get this gasket off of here, which is horrible. It feels as though someone stuck it on with something. Probably stuck it on with pressure. 
Feed the cable through and out. What I don't want to do is leave any of the bits inside the cover. Because it don't belong in there. Anyway, I'll crack on with that and I'll bring you back when both surfaces are cleaned up. Hopefully I've cleaned that those faces, both faces off enough. And hopefully this gasket will seal. So I'm gonna run the electrics up through There's a dowel there and I'm gonna stick a bolt up through there to hold that side of the gasket. So hopefully as it's put on, it stays in place. Whoa, there's the magnetism. As I was saying earlier, it's It's what was making it difficult to pull the casing off. It's messed my gasket up there. And I'll do a bit of a cross pattern on doing the bolts up just so it hopefully pulls it in a bit evenly and so the old um Haynes manual I've got has left me a bit lacking again with regard to torque settings on these bolts. That's all them nipped up. Um, and the gasket is looking good. There's an even amount showing around the edge, which is quite promising. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be doing this with a big lever. Um, but not knowing the torques, that's, that's good enough for me. So that's that in, rerun the wires and then start putting everything back together. Put some oil in it. I might run the wires and then start it up and see if I've got any leakages at that point rather than sticking it all back together. I think that might be prudent. Anyway, in a minute. Okay, so that's the side cover on and torqued up as much as I want to do it. Obviously all these bits ain't on. The electrics are wired, again not tidied but wired in, and I've just put three and a half litres of Castrol Power One in, so now I'm going to start it up. I think at first I'm going to bring my fan into play, stop me choking to death, hopefully. Turn the bike to face it and then start the bike up and see if I get any moisture. I don't think I'm going to get any moisture from just a start up 
I think it really needs to be under pressure and being going going through rapid motion. But I will start it up, let the oil flow as well, and then I can double check that once it's back together, once it's down and level on the floor. But yes, first of all, let's give it a try. Sorry about the noise, I'll leave the fan going for a little bit longer and give it a check over. Just one tip, before you do a test run to check for drips, wipe off all the drips that were there in the first place. <laughs> oh dear, never learn. Always in a rush and getting nowhere. But, it's all looking rather lovely and dry. So, the big test will be a road test, won't it? Which won't be today, because it's been peeing hard all day. Anyway, I'll get on and put the rest of the bits on. Don't you love how this centre stand dolly works? The electrics cleaned up a bit. Bit of bit of black taping. That's the old stuff. I don't know why that's loose. <laughs> so it's only so much tidying you can do. And actually covered the positive terminal this time. I don't know why that didn't have a cover on it. But um, yeah, that's the electrics put back together. Just got to slide the air box in. The old snorkely bit goes down that side, which is where the air gets sucked in. And then you just got to manipulate it onto the, the front boot there, which obviously directs it into the carbs. Not obviously, but it does. But before you do all that, if you're anything like me, Remember that you put the screw back in the hole and when you put the airbox back in, that will actually be in the way. And while I'm here, because I just happen to have one on the shelf, doesn't everybody, I'll stick in Clean filter looks a bit better than the other one, doesn't it? And that is that side of it done. So now I've got the start motor cover to put on and the front sprocket cover to put on. That's that done. Push my electrics back so they don't get pinched. Ignore the phone because I'm busy. And it's bound to be my missus saying, it's nearly seven o'clock, we need to have some dinner. Bloody diabetics, having the dinners on time. Ridiculous. So, you just need a spanner. Was it 13? Yeah. Let's do my gear lever. Should have marked it. But I didn't. So I'll live with it. I'll bring the foot peg back up to where it was first. That'll give me some idea. Look how low I've put that. 
Because the foot peg was at the wrong bloody angle, wasn't it? That looks too high. But, what's the next option? Down there, that feels a little bit low. I'm going to bring it up. And if I remember, on the test run, I'll take the 30mm spanner. Because it's bound to be wrong. Just lucky like that. Just lucky. My whole life, just lucky. Not as lucky as Kylie. She's lucky, lucky, lucky. But me, I'm just lucky. Lucky to have you guys watching what I do. <laughs> What a banana I am. And if anyone's watching this, it's by no means a tutorial, <laughs> okay? So you have been warned, it's not a tutorial. I am just a bloke who thinks he knows what he's doing and decides to put it on video for you guys, 17, wasn't it? Yeah. Just drop that there for a minute. And if you are doing this job, good luck to you. Because <laughs> that was way more than I ever thought that would take. Why does that feel like that's not actually screwing into anything? That one is. Do that one up. Someone's got a dodgy Fred. Fred, are you dodgy? You do look a bit... Yeah. Yeah, it's not happy. Not happy. I think these are M10s. You fell over. There we go. Well, one good thing is the thread in the frame is good, which is much better than it not being the so. So that is that job done, albeit needs a test ride just to make sure I hope that's helped someone but as I said do not think that's a five minute job <clears throat> unless you're competent <laughs> unlike me and then it quite possibly would be a five minute job oh look at that that looks gorgeous Oh, <laughs> took it off there and smeared it all over there. That's all we need. Smear it all over. Give it an oily film to protect it. Gorgeous. So as I say, just needs proper test ride. Put it under pressure. And... Um, well, fluid needs checking. Need to make sure that I put it down on flat ground and double check the oil before I go out on a test ride. But yes, there you go. That was me changing the alternator slash stator cover gasket on my GS1000. 
more of a pain than I thought it would be, but it's been a very rainy Saturday afternoon. So I'm so pleased I had something to do. <laughs> oh, I've got a list of stuff to do. Anyway, there you go. That's the GS1000. Hopefully a little bit a little bit more leak free. And just for Mr. G Duncan, there's my V-Strom Fazend with a cap capital F for Fazend because it's fast and it's a Fazend. And this is a Fazend as well. And this is a Fazend. And on Iron Man, when the not Iron Man, it's Avengers, isn't it? When the little girl turns around to Tony Stark, when his daughter turns around to him and says, I love you 3,000. She'd actually seen one of my videos and loved my 3,000. That's what she was referring to. Didn't even like Tony Stark. She loved my 3,000. Anyway, that's enough stupidness at the end of a video. I wonder if anyone <laughs> stays tuned long enough to actually hear it. Anyway, that's me done. I'm going in for a beer. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra.